I'm Madison Dean and welcome back to our final show of Sagas for this school year. Today we'll be showing you stories from all around the high school. You may have noticed a new structure in the cafeteria by the art rooms. Let's find out what it is. You might have heard a lot of commotion in the cafeteria by the art rooms. The industrial production class has been working hard on building a new structure for our hallway. The industrial protect, uh, production class is a class of kids that have been selected personally by, by me or an instructor to be in a class. It's basically an advanced woodworking class to where the main focus is on building cabinets uh, and more advanced projects that take more advanced skills. Mr. Uh, Monahan asked us to build this. Um, he kind of gave us a direction what he wanted with it and uh, we had the uh, kids measure up his ideas and, and take his designs and what we have behind us is what they created. Since the class is by invite only, there is only a maximum of 10 students. This year there's only three students in the class and one of them is Ben Pisaki. Well, I started in middle school with the usual industrial tech where we would get into the wood shop like in the latter half of the semester. Then I took shop and so it's been it's been ever since seventh grade it's uh it's always fun whenever we have whenever we have to work together on something like this like for industrial production we only have us three guys and mr tomanic in there right now so we became fast friends this new hall of fame will also have a lot of additional features to it it also required a lot of special skills and tools to build uh, this is going to be uh, artifacts and pictures of past people that have been inducted to the Seaman Hall of Fame. We have one Hall of Fame uh, area down in the Commons area, but I think there wasn't a bigger area to display everything. Uh, for the Hall of Fame, we used just about everything in there, table saws, miter saws, uh, joiners, planers, it's just, just about everything. and then. Putting it up, we used impact drills and regular drills and uh, fun different kinds of uh, pneumatic tools like nail guns and pin nailers. Uh, it was the production class, us four, and then uh, we actually had maintenance come down and help us a little bit get the upper cabinets into play. Despite only having three students, a teacher, and maintenance coming to help, the new Hall of Fame has been a long and rewarding process for all. It's been a year-long project with with me and, and four kids and uh, a year-long project. It's going to be amazing, like class reunions, like 20 years down the line, just coming back and seeing this and just pointing out like, hey, I made that, all right. Uh, it's just something that's in my blood. It's, I, I can't really describe it. It's just really fulfilling to see something that you've made from scratch and just have it be actually useful. These students are excited to see what they have made for many years to come. At the end of every year, the seniors, as a tradition, play a game called Assassins. At the end of the year, seniors come together to play the game Assassins. Assassins is a water gun game. The goal is to get your target out before the round is over. This year, some players came up with a sneak attack plan. So the seminar before the Friday, we did the plan to get out Lauren West's assassin, which was Alex Kozloff. Madison's like, okay, we've got this new idea. We're just going to act like I'm Lauren, 
and then Lauren's gonna be in the trunk and you're just gonna be in the back seat. I'm just like, okay, sounds good. So basically we came to the high school on that Friday. Madison is just sitting there just like having sunglasses on, hood over, just like in the hood up, just like trying to cover herself as much as she can. And we saw Alex and Tori Moten here. And I was like, oh my gosh, there they are. And so uh, they thought we were meeting up with Macy and that wasn't the plan. So they drove off. And then so we just started circling back around the parking lot and then we saw them come back. So I got out of Lauren's car with my water gun and they thought I was Lauren. So I started running towards Alex and Alex runs away from me and Tori goes, Wait, that guy hit her! And I yell, uh, I yelled this word to get Kyle out of the car. I got out of the car with my water gun and started running towards the car and I saw Alex and I sprayed her. <laughs> we got each other! We got each other! So that's the story. One senior thinks that they will win it all. Alright, so my strategy is that you just gotta play with the person's mind. You gotta tell them you have somebody else, even though you have them, and then somehow tricking them to hang out and like be all nice to them and just stab them on the back. It's a fun game. Um, at the end you win like more than 200 bucks. Um, I mean, money's life. At the moment, I'm not sure. We have still quite a people left, um, but I am for sure I might take this win and take it home. The winner gets 75% of the money, and the person who gets second place gets 25% of the money. While in high school, many people encounter new experiences. I sat down and talked to a few people to hear their stories. Growing up is anything but easy, especially when you're going through high school and experiencing situations you haven't before. After posting on social media asking for people to tell their personal experiences on camera, only girls responded. Here's what they had to say. I went to a party and I got a little drunk and I remember that I passed out on the floor and I had a friend that was there with me but I don't know where she went and then the next thing I know I woke up and I was in a bed and there was a guy on top of me I didn't have any clothes on I just remember like being very confused like as to where I was and what was going on and stuff happened and I tried saying no and stop and I remember his friends were like outside like laughing and it was really embarrassing. I had a best friend. We had been best friends for a really long time and we always trust each other and it was really nice to find like a guy friend who wasn't going to try to do anything and we were really close and then one day my one of my co-workers came up to me and gave me some text messages between him and um, another co-worker and I noticed that my guy friend was trying to get me to go to one of these parties to meet all of his other friends and thought it'd be really really fun and he was trying to convince me I told him I want to go without my other friend because I didn't feel completely safe around a whole bunch of guys that I didn't know and he begged my friend to come and we were that night we were getting ready to go and then and it started storming so we didn't and then when I found out those texts there were texts between him saying like he really really wanted to come to the party because he was gonna get me drunk and and have sex with me and that he was hoping that it'd get he'd get lucky because I would have been drunk and then when I brought it up to the guy friend who made those texts and was going to do that he just said it wouldn't really have mattered because he would have been drunk too honestly I don't know what have what would have happened if we actually did go to that party. With many of you still in high school, you may need some advice for future relationships. Um, I would say that you need to make sure if you're going to a party that one, you bring someone that you trust like really well. Like the girl I brought, I wasn't like very close with. And I think you just need to like be aware of who you're with and what's going on around you. Like make sure like the guys that are there aren't just gonna use you and take advantage of you. So I think that's really important. Make sure you know who you're around. My advice would be to really know who you're dealing with, um, to really be aware of it too, um, especially for parties. I feel like you should always bring a friend that you trust um, and always try to know everyone's intentions before you get involved with them. Although this happens to boys as well, it occurs to girls more often. Now, here's some advice to the guys that do this. I think you just need to grow up and mature. We're not objects. Girls aren't objects. We're people. We're humans. We have feelings. And it's not fair to us. And I know it happens to guys too, but it happens to girls a lot more. First off, it's really messed up. Um, guys are definitely wired different than girls. Girls were really more about emotions and guys are just, you know, that's just how they're wired. That's how their brain is. But 
I feel like guys need to know that they really need to use their brains more because it doesn't just affect the girl, it affects them for their whole life and it can really change your life too and there can be consequences for it so you just need to be smart. Remember, if you experience anything that makes you uncomfortable, make sure that you tell somebody. This is the final episode of the year. Here's how Saugus came to be a show. Hi, I'm Madison Dean, and welcome back to the third show of Sagas. Sagas is, is a news magazine show that uh, is created by Broadcast 2 students at Seaman High School. Um, it's usually made of feature stories. We try to come up with ideas that are either dealing with the Seaman community, Seaman students, um, something like that. In today's show, we'll see changes to semen and programs, as well as some changes that a student and a teacher have gone through. We came with the, I came with the idea, let's actually make a show like we used to, like making the news magazine. I was honestly, I didn't even know what to think. I was like, I go, I was like, what, what is, what's a monthly magazine show? Like, what does that even mean? Um, and we hadn't come up with a name yet, and he was asking for names, and I didn't want to do it at all. And so, we're looking for a name. Um, and so I was thinking, well, we're Vikings, which is Norse, and so I was looking at kind of the Norse mythology and things like that and, and what uh, Vikings did and things. And so one of the things Vikings did was uh, they told sagas. And so they sit around and tell these elaborate stories about conquests and other things. And so I was like, well, that's pretty much what we want to do is tell these elaborate stories about um, Vikings at, here at school you know, in our community, and so that's where we came up with the idea of uh, naming the show Sagas. Producing the show is a long process that has its challenges. Uh, for the show, I am not only the anchor, but I also edit the show, and I usually end up doing commentary, so I do quite a bit for the show. Part of the problem is, you know, this is more real life. Uh, it takes a long time sometimes to do these stories, and so that's a difficulty. Um, getting access to people is a difficulty. Um, getting students to get the work done and uh, turned in on time is also a difficulty. Um, there's lots of technical issues because we're shooting with DSLRs and using audio equipment and things like that. And so it's a really good learning experience for the students. In-depth stories is what makes sagas stand out. They like that they can see these stories that are more in-depth and that they can learn about these things that are going on with the students or teachers or our community and things like that. And that it just gives, it highlights you know, some of the really good things that are going on, um, and also that we're covering these things in depth, and that, you know, a lot of times these people don't, you don't know about this stuff, and so we want to try to find stories that um, people may not know. For me, the in-depth stories have really meant a lot to me, and they've really affected me in a way that no other story has, and I've gotten to know a lot of people in ways that nobody else will ever get to know them. And I, and I also get to report on that stuff and I get to show what their lives are like. And I get to report things that nobody else knows about. And I think that's my favorite thing about sagas. Viewership is a main concern for the show. Hey, uh, it's brand new and so the idea is, you know, trying to get the word out there and so um, you know, if you, if I like to check YouTube and see how many views we've had. Um, you know, people, we get that word, we put out a promo that's on SBTV in the Daily News. We'll learn more about a club that was able to help out March of Dimes, students with special talents. And a special project that our class has been working on. And then we tweet out the show and we put it on SEMANews.com and put it on, um, and so, you know, we try to like make people know about what's going on here and know about the show. I think the one way that we could really improve that is maybe using more social media, more Instagram, because we have a Seaman News Instagram, but we just don't use it. And even getting more students involved, so more people to take the class, more people to talk about it, and maybe make stories that students would like. Sagas has come a long ways since the first episode. It's more than just a project. It's more than just a monthly show. It means a lot to all of us. You know, I, from the feedback I get from all kinds of people, they really enjoy the show and enjoy the feature stories. Sagas is the best.
That's it. Sagas will be back next year. Sagas would be nothing without our incredible teacher. So let's find out a little bit more about him. Probably like last month, we were thinking about what we were gonna do for the last show and how we felt, some of us seniors felt like we really needed to give a thank you to Dee because, you know, a lot of us have built a very, a, like a really strong relationship with him and, you know, he definitely deserves this. And so we decided to do this story and we gave it to Alejandro and, you know, he's doing pretty good with it. So hopefully uh, Dee will really appreciate what we're doing. I think I'm gonna miss probably everything. Um, look, going into this class, I look forward to it every day. Um, I'm gonna miss just how his like mood changes. Um, like he'll come into class and he'll say, like we gotta get to work and then we'll do some work for a little bit, but then by the end of the class, we could be drawing on the boards or watching vines or um, talking about French fried taters, uh huh. But uh, you know, um, I'm just gonna miss how um, sarcastic he is and how down to earth he is and how uh, friendly and inviting he is. I am gonna miss everything about D. He is seriously one of, he's become one of my favorite people. I started in this class my freshman year. I came in for 21st century journalism and I met this guy with, with gray hair and I was like, who, who is this? And, and I just, I never thought that I would end up being like best friends with my broadcast teacher. And I think I'll just miss talking with him every day and I'll miss I'll miss him making fun of me and stuff like that. And he's just, he's done so much for all of us. And you know, I wouldn't, none of us would be the broadcasters we are today without him. What's sad is every time we have students that leave us, especially if they've been in a program like the whole high school career or something like that, we're gonna miss them and miss the fun times we had. And I hope that they're able to have good memories about the experience they had here. Um, you know, I teach high school and I've done it for 20 years now, and so for 20 years I've had to say goodbye to some really fabulous people. Um, and so it's sad to see them move on, but I, th I hope that there was a positive impact on their life and that when they leave here, they will be better people for being part of this program and that hopefully influence them in a positive way. Uh, let's see, um, I've come back from lunch and my class has not been here in class, but really they're in class, they're just hiding. <laughs> but I always know that they're here. Um, I, you know, we have these whiteboard tables that we got this year and they were like great ideas, like let's get these whiteboard tables, you can draw storyboards and you can write out your plans and your voiceovers and all that, but really it became a spot where people can just color and make these funny drawings of like uh, Spongebob and Phineas and Ferb and other silly things. So that's also one of them. Um, there's a lot of people that like to dance at times in class. I don't know why. There's this new dancing hand thing that kids do, and I haven't figured out how to Trinity, do it, but they do it. Now. They also think <laughs> memes are funny. I don't know why someone thought I'll take a photo and put some words over the top of the meme, and it somehow is funny because most memes aren't funny. Um, so we got that. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, as far as the memories go, you got to have all that, and then. You know, you have all these different personalities in broadcast too because you have these five students and so everybody kind of knows each other very well. Okay, so I'm gonna try to get through this thank you without crying. I don't know if it's gonna happen. <laughs> so I just wanted to thank Di Leonardo for being my favorite teacher for the past like two and a half years and you know, after freshman year, I, I just, I knew that there was something different about him. He's just, you're just such a great teacher, D, and I, I really don't know what I'm gonna do without you next year. And I can't thank you enough for helping me with. <laughs> Hold on. I don't know how I'm supposed to get to this. I don't know if I'll ever be able to pay you back for how great of a broadcaster you've made me. I never thought that I would ever get to where I am today. You were there for me. And, uh, I'm just gonna miss you so much. And um, 
I'm always there if you ever need a babysitter because I love watching your kids. They're, they're great, just like you. And I'm gonna miss you a lot next year, but um, I'll come back and bug you, I promise. And I wish you the best of luck uh, for years to come because I know you have such great ideas and the idea of sagas was, was such a good idea. And I just wanted to thank you for everything. You're the best. Okay, um, thank you Dee for everything you've done for me for the past four years. I can remember coming in here as a little freshman, scared to death about um, taking notes, not meeting your standards and everything, and then um, just helping me grow as a person. I um, found my true calling in this class, and I know that that is because of you that um, um, I know that it's because of you that I know that I want to be a journalist and it's because of you that I'm a better person and thank you for being a friend and a teacher and um, just providing all the opportunities for me that have come with this class and um, the California trip is something I'll never forget. And this is definitely my hardest goodbye of my high school career. Mr. DeLeonardo will continue to teach these classes for years to come. Now I will leave you with a commentary about senior advice. Being a senior who's ready to graduate, I have some advice for underclassmen. Find your niche, find what you're good at, and stick with it. Find your friend group and stick with them because no one else will add your back. And lastly, enjoy high school while it lasts. But remember, high school doesn't last forever, and when, it, when it's your time to graduate, let it go. My advice to underclassmen is to just be yourself because if you're not yourself, you're not gonna fit in anywhere. And if you find a place to fit in, you're not gonna be happy. So that is the main advice I have. Also, get involved, because you will be bored if you don't get involved. Go to the games, get involved in clubs, all that stuff, because it's a ton of fun, and high school goes by way too fast, and at the end of it, you're not even gonna know what happened. So that's my advice to underclassmen. Thank you for joining us on this first season of Sagas. Although I will no longer be here, the show will continue next year.